Naomi appears to be slightly teasing a big change, so we'll see what could be happening there. We'll also check out big potential guests, Samantha Irvin, and more. Starting things off with the latest update for Naomi and her direction. Naomi last held a championship in the WWE back in 2022, and that was the Women's Tag Team Championship. Obviously, everyone knows how that story ended. Mercedes and Naomi didn't like how they were being treated at the time, and some big backstage incident led for them storming off of the company. That's when Naomi took her talents to TNA and had a very nice short run within the company, even securing their Knockouts Championship. Naomi returned to WWE in 2024, and it was quite the surprising return, considering the fact that she did go through that massive walkout just a few years back. But it worked out perfectly, Naomi was back home. They put her on the same brand as her husband Jimmy Uso, and things have been smooth all year long. But a narrative that WWE has begun building for Naomi recently is the idea that she's currently in the middle of a massive WWE championship drought. She won the TNA title, she had the messy reign as WWE tag team champion, but in terms of singles WWE championship, Naomi has not held one since 2017, a full seven year drought of WWE singles gold. And when you look back at Naomi's 2024 run on SmackDown, it largely consisted of her taking part in several number one contenders matches and even several championship matches. She's always so close to the gold, but can never bring it home and close out the deal. That's been Naomi's main narrative for the entire year of 2024. She's right there teetering on the WWE women's title, but it keeps slipping out of her grasp. The September 27th edition of SmackDown was the latest example of this same narrative continuing for Naomi. She found herself in a number one contenders match for the WWE women's title against Bayley. And we did discuss how maybe there was some outside interference that would play a factor in Naomi and Bayley's match, but that was not the case at all. Naomi just ended up flat out losing to Bayley cleanly. Naomi and Bayley are close friends both on screen and off screen. They spent the weekend before that SmackDown at a football game together, and even revealed that they went out for a drink together after SmackDown. But despite how close of friends they may be, you just know that that loss still has to sting Naomi at the end of the day. And that brings us to a very interesting backstage segment for Naomi following that loss to Bailey. Naomi is seen walking alone backstage with a very serious and stern look on her face. When she's suddenly approached by Bailey, Bailey apologizes to Naomi for beating her, and Naomi snaps back by telling Bailey that she's not sorry at all, and that Bailey's happy that she beat her. But then Naomi steps back into her smile and tells Bailey that it's okay, because she would have been happy too if she beat Bailey. They smooth things over with Naomi telling Bailey that she deserved this, and how she was looking forward to Bailey taking the WWE women's title away from Nia Jax. The two of them also told each other that they will meet again after Bailey captured the women's title. After Bailey leaves, Naomi walks a few steps before Tiffany Stratton comes into the picture to mock her as well. Tiffany mocks Naomi for her not becoming the number one contender and tells Naomi that she can spend her time at Bad Blood with her pathetic little friends that are hosting the show, which of course is a reference to Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Naomi said that she was going to speak to Nick Aldis about setting up a match against Tiffany Stratton next week, since Tiffany's schedule was clear as well. So that segment and that outcome of the number one contenders match really paints the picture perfectly for Naomi. She could have been the number one contender if she was the one that secured the pinfall in the tag team match, but that didn't happen. Then she could have beat Bailey for the top spot, but that didn't happen as well. And now she has to deal with Bailey coming up to her backstage, and Tiffany also rubbing it in her face that Naomi will be doing nothing during the Bad Blood premium live event. So a lot of fans are feeling like they're really establishing the foundation and character motivation for Naomi to turn heel. She's been very patient and nice for the entire year of 2024, but opportunities keep slipping out of her fingers at the last second. Maybe she feels like some added aggression and a complete shift in attitude may be what's needed for her to take her over that hump and break right through to win her first WWE singles title in seven years. 
A heel turn for Naomi will also be a nice fresh switch up and character change for her, because the last time Naomi really portrayed a heel was way back in 2015, during her time in the Team Bad Faction. So she's quite literally been on a near 10 year run as a babyface. So seeing Naomi tap back into that heel side for the first time in a long time is a very exciting thing to think about. No more handshakes with Bailey being nice, letting opportunities pass her by, just an aggressive version of Naomi that will stop at nothing to get back the WWE women's title. Fans really think that could be what WWE is going for here and setting up for Naomi. Some fans have even pointed out how Tiffany and Naomi are sort of on the same path but at opposite sides. Tiffany Stratton appears to be teetering on a babyface turn in the near future, while Naomi appears to be teetering on a heel turn in the near future. So it would be pretty insane if those two characters go through their respective transitions and change up everything in the women's division. Maybe Nia Jax's new ally will be Naomi, and Bailey will find herself alongside Tiffany Stratton. So keep an eye on everything there because several stars could be turning in the near future. Speaking of bad blood, some fans have been having mixed feelings about the event having a hosting role, especially when the hosts are the current women's tag team champions. There are just some fans that feel like they should be on the card and taking part in a storyline rather than hosting. Some fans were voicing this standpoint online when Samantha Irvin shared her thoughts on the perspective. She had this to say about those complaining fans, quote, We just never gonna sit back and enjoy, are we? Internet wrestling community knows how to book PLEs, secure sponsors, delegate budgets, call matches, commentate, brand, and market, but they don't know how to enjoy the show, end quote. So the community is split on that subject. They even promised to have surprise VIP guests at the event. Now, what do they mean by surprise VIP guests? It's hard to tell. Maybe they're referring to other WWE superstars joining them throughout the show, or maybe they're referring to actual celebrity guests. It's a well-known fact that famous music producer Metro Boomin has been heavily featured in the Bad Blood promotional video alongside Cody Rhodes. So could it be in the realm of possibility that Metro Boomin could be one of these surprise VIP guests to actually show up at Bad Blood? His face has been all over those advertisements, and his song with Future is even the official theme for the event. So if there's going to be any VIP guests, definitely feels like Metro Boomin is up there on the list of candidates. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.